Welcome to Wisdom Church of Manila, recorded live. Hello, my name is Esther Respecho and I am part of the Ministry of Helps here at Wisdom Church of Manila. I'm going to share my testimony ng time na pagkagising ko ng umaga, that was a Sunday, pagkagising ko sobrang sakit ng eyes ko, hindi ko siya ma-open, para siyang may tumutusok sa eyes, sa right eye ko at that time. Pero yung left, hindi naman. So, parang may something inside my eyes. But when I take a look at it, wala. wala. So, that time then, um, nakasked kami for my prayer meeting that time and I was thinking if pupunta ba ako sa church. But then the Holy Spirit told me na pumunta ka, pumunta ka. Kasi yung, ano, yung healing anointing ng church, grabe talaga. At saka yung faith-filled declarations and yung makapag-agree yung mga tao na sa paligid mo. I obey the leading of the Holy Spirit na kahit sobrang sakit ng eyes ko at that time, pumunta pa rin ako sa church. Siyempre, yung enemy ang ginawa niya na pain na naman. Nung nags, nasa CR ako, nag-pain na naman siya. Tapos hindi ko na naman mamulat yung eyes ko. Sobrang, sobrang sakit talaga niya. And then, nakita ko ni Sis Isa sa, si, sa washroom. And then, she started praying for me. Naglagay siya ng oil sa eyes ko that time. She started, uh, nag, nag-tongue siya, nag-pray. And then, after that, immediately, nawala yung pain sa eyes ko. And then, I received my healing at that time. Na-receive ko siya. Tapos, na nalagay ko na yung contact lens ko. Actually, nung kanina eh, earlier, hindi ko pa siya malagay kasi nag-pain nga. So, after I received my healing, na kapag contact lens na uli ako, and I received instant healing and breakthrough. Yung kingdom principles na natutunan ko doon is yung it matters yung mga tao na sa paligid mo. Kasi before ako umalis sa house, they were saying na kaya ko ba pumunta sa church? But then, I said yes. I came into agreement with the Lord and with the Holy Spirit na aaten ako ng church. Tapos yung, mat- yung agreement ko with the Holy Spirit, tapos yung faith ko rin at the same time na I believe I have my healing already, I- so I-, I receive it. Tapos agreement, declaration, and yung power of the Holy Anointing Oil of Jesus Christ. Yung presence nga, yung power nga, tapos just receive it and receive it. And isa pa doon yung the power of tongues. So, nagawa ko na lahat ng gagawin ko, nag-declare na ako, nag-command na ako. Pero yung isa pang powerful weapon that we have is the power of tongues na hindi man natin nakikita but the Holy Spirit will pray for us. And yun yung time na pinag-pray ako ni Sis Aisel na sa washroom then nag-tongues and nag-tongues and she released the fire of God. Immediately I receive it. So, at the same time, you faith ka rin. Good afternoon, church. Hello. Uh, welcome to our uh, afternoon service. And. Pakita tato si pastor sa <laughs> Welcome to our afternoon service. And we are glad that you are here. And also, I would like to say hello sa ating online viewers. Ang grabe yung impact ng church natin sa mga online viewers natin. I just found out, no? Uh, I would like to say hello and good afternoon. We are live right now sa ating YouTube channel, Wisdom Church of Manila. Ayan. If you are new here sa church, here in our church, we provide solutions, ideas, and strategy, not necessarily from our pastors, or any teachers here in this church, in this, this uh, podium, but from the uncompromised Word of God. We teach the uncompromised Word of God 
so that you'll be able to receive ideas, solutions, strategy from the Lord, and so that you'll be able to be equipped, you'll be able to be uh, empowered, so that you'll be able to live an abundant life. As you come to church, as you listen to the Word of God, every Sunday, Naga, nakikinig ka pa ng ating Spotify, Wisdom Church of Manila, sa Spotify, nakikinig ka pa ng podcast. Sooner or later, three years from now, uh, a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, your health will be better, your relationship will be better, your finances will be better than compared to this year. And because we teach the uncompromised Word of God, the supernaturals and the miracles are also happening in this church Yun nga, minabasa akong testimony last time na nasa malayong part ng Philippines, nasa malayong part ng outside Metro Manila, and the impact na ginagawa ng church natin is so powerful. So that may makikita ka, not just in this church, ngayon ko lang na-realize, not just in this church, but you will see uh, miracles of healing, miracles of relationship restored, miracles of financial breakthrough, and that is what our church is all about. So this afternoon, I would like to welcome you. This is Wisdom Church of Manila, experiencing God's abundant life. <laughs> woo. Woo, 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 woo. And for our tithes and offering, I would like to welcome Pastor Riz Nicolas. Thank you, RV. Give RV a round of applause. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? I feel like it's been uh, a, a month since I've done the tithes and offering, huh? Yeah, I think it was a month. Anyway, I usually do the tithes and offering. It's usually a, 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 a preaching. And I was really led to talk about this particular verse today. Uh, but as always, uh, let's start with Hosea 4, six. And Hosea says, my people are destroyed for the lack of? Knowledge. For the lack of? Knowledge. Knowledge. And that's what our church provides, knowledge. Knowledge so that you will have wisdom, wisdom to be able to hear from the Holy Spirit, to discern His voice. Our base verse with, with um, tithes and offering is always uh, Malachi 3.8. Next. Parang tumaas to ah. Usually nandito. I need a pointer. Anyway, tumaas na? Anyway, say, will a man <laughs> refraud, the, sorry, will a man rob or defraud God? Yet you rob and defraud me. But you say, in what way do we rob and defraud you? You have withheld your tithes and offering. We already know that there is a difference between the tithe and the offering. We teach that in this church. Uh, the seed offering is not your tithe. It is an offering to the Lord directed by the Holy Spirit. The seed offering is what you plant to receive your harvest. It is directed by the Holy Spirit. You need to plant the right seed. Jesus said in Luke 6, next verse, Luke 6, he says, give, say give, give. and gifts will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, they will pour into the pouch formed by the bosom of your robe and used as a bag. This is not spiritual. It's actually physical. I mean, it's so clear, right? The pouch formed by the bosom of your robe and used as a bag. It's your purse, your wallet, your bag. It's where you put your money. For with the measure you deal with, deal out, it will be measured back to you. Who here believes this verse? A few people in front. Really? Who here believes this verse? This is from Jesus, our Lord. Amen? But who here has sown seeds, offering consistently, but you're still waiting for this to, be, to come back to you, the same measure, your harvest to come back to you? Who are you still waiting? Oh my gosh, one person. So my entire message doesn't apply to you. Who are you still waiting for their harvest? Okay. Does it seem like there's something delaying your harvest this entire 2023? Who here feels like that? One person. Wow, the participation in this church overwhelms me. One at a time, one at a time. Seriously, now I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> and Pastor Phoebe, anyway, who here feels like there's a delay in their harvest? Okay. Maybe it has to do with this verse here. Today I was led to teach this verse. 
Mark 11, 24. We teach this verse a lot in our church. Let's start on verse 22, next verse. It says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, say this mountain, be removed and be cast to the sea and does not doubt in his heart, believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Now here, Jesus was teaching to his disciples, right? How to walk by faith. This is about preparing yourself to receive your harvest. There's a lot of clues in this verse. He said the first thing you need to do is stop asking God to do it for you, to exercise your authority. Say authority. We teach about your believer's authority in this church. You speak to the mountain. You speak to the problems. Let's look at the Amplified Version, actually. Next verse. Amplified Version of the same thing. It says, Jesus replying to them says, have faith in God Constantly. How often you're supposed to have faith? Constantly. Am I speaking too fast? Okay. Next verse, 1123. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, your problems, your challenges in life, be lifted and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in all in his heart, say his heart. Turn to your neighbor, say, puso mo. Tagalog yan for heart, by the way. Your heart. That is the topic of today, by the way, your heart. But believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. You're supposed to speak to the mountain you're facing, right? And give it direction. But the key ingredient for you when you're speaking to your mountains is to move without doubt. And that doubt is usually placed in your heart by the enemy. Right? I mean, you believe this, right? You have faith. We believe for 2024. And then the doubt comes. The enemy says, hmm, sinabi mo yan last year, 2023. Tignan mo, parang 2022. 2024 will be the same year as 2023. Who has that doubt in that heart? It's what the enemy plans because he's trying to steal the word. You uproot your seeds by placing doubt. You stump on your harvest by placing doubt. Every time you doubt and give life to your doubt, there goes your harvest. Say, bye-bye, harvest. No one said, bye-bye, harvest. No, exactly. So what happens when you speak to your wife? Say, akala ko kikita ka. Akala ko may bonus ka. Wala naman bonus. What do you say? But I canceled that in Jesus' name because mas malaking bonus mo next month. You have to be careful where you place your but. You cancel what you don't want you come to agreement with, right? You don't go to your wife and say, I come with you in agreement. Wala nang bonus na yan. Ilang buwan mo na sinasabi yan. Wala nang bonus na You cancel it in just saying, say cancel it. That's how you not uproot your seeds, okay? Next verse. For this reason I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe this is the key verse, by the way. Believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. Jesus said that when you pray, you must what? Believe, trust, be confident because it's already granted. Do you notice the difference in that verse? That word granted? Does it mean that you will be receiving it? No. He didn't say that when you pray that it's going to be granted to you in the future. He didn't say that. He didn't say you're going to receive it in the future. Look at the verse again. It says that it is granted to you. That's past tense. Ang Tagalog sa past tense. Tapos na. Say, what? Paano na natapos? Because Jesus already paid for it on the cross. Remember? When did Jesus go on the cross? About 2,000 years ago. So it's past that. It's already a done deal. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's a done deal. This is key. If you get this revelation today, that's probably why. Because you're hoping and you're praying and you're expecting. But the revelation here, tapos na. Turn to your neighbor and say, tapos na. 
Mas malakas yung tapos na din, they're done deal na. Tapos na! So church, I have a question for you. Kung tapos na, how come you're not receiving that healing? Or that provision? Or that financial increase? We will, sabi diyan. How come? Good question, right? The first thing that I will have to say when you have already received it, na natanggap mo na itong revelation, at dumadaming Tagalog ko, ah, na uh, apektuhan ako dito ni Sis Aisel dyan. Gumagaling Tagalog ko. <laughs> the first thing on how to receive it is that you have to enter in God's rest. Next verse. What does that mean? For we who believe, so a previous verse about believing, right, and trusting, that is, we who personally trust, same thing, trust, and constantly rely on God, enter that rest, say rest, so we have His inner peace now because we are confident in our salvation and assured of His power. But Pastor Riz, that sounds good, and gandang gandang verse na yan, right? Pero, Anong ibig sabihin nun? What does that mean? Sabi niya, sa niya, o nga. What does that mean? Say, o nga. Say, o nga. O nga. <laughs> o nga, what does that mean? Enter, it sounds rest. It sounds so good. But does it really matter? I mean, what does it mean? So, let's give an example right here. John. Kang ano ko ngayon. John. Let's pretend, pretend lang ha, pretend, that you're deeply in debt. Pretend lang. Utang. Baon ka sa utang. Baon ka ba sa utang? <laughs> Hindi naman. I cancel that in Jesus' name. Kung baon ka yun sa utang, I cancel. Just in case, baon ka sa utang, right? And say, you had, you had this great idea. You're gonna start a business. You borrowed uh, 200,000 pesos from your friend Paul. 200,000 pesos. Sabi, kikita tayo. Tapos, uh, doble yung ano, investment mo, right? Excited ka, brother in Christ, ganun, right? And all that. Pray about it and all that, right? Right? Six months later, that business fell apart. Sabi ni Paul, kinama ko nitong brother ko. Actually, it wasn't scam. Mali-mali lang. No, mga choices, baka mali din. All that, right? Who's, who's had that? Ako lang ba? <laughs> no, right? You, you're excited about a business and nothing's coming apart. And all of a sudden, your bills are piling up. Daming utang. Your month's uh, rent, wala nang pang rent. Wala na ring pang bayan ng meralko. You got notice na ikakat ng meralko mo. Wala na yung tubig mo. Wala na yung aso mo. Wala na yung pusa mo. Wala na yung mga daga. Nawawala lahat. Anyway, you can't sleep at night. Ano yan? Ang nga pala ito daga. Mabuti mo lang mga daga. But anyway, walang aso mo, walang pusa. You can't sleep at night. You know, si Joe, palagi nakikita. Palagi kang gising. Hindi makatulog. Who's been there? Right? Let's be honest. There's been uh, times in life, ganun. Right? And you, you imagine, you're stressing out. Anxiety, worry. There's just all spirits, by the way, right? Nothing is working. Anong gawin mo? Wala. And then, uh, John came to me. And sabi, may utang ako, 200,000. May mga ano ko, mga pang renta. 30,000, 40,000. Sabi, magkanang kailangan mo? Mga 240 para mabula, para mabayaran ko siya. At makakapaking akaray. Sabi ko, you know what, John? Here, 300,000. Pero mayroon kang pang for next month. And John, anong reaction mo? Thank you. Thank you. Excited. But it's not cash. It's a promise. Sabi ko, you know what? Darating to next week. So, susulatan kitang check in next week. How would you feel? Grateful. But it's just a promise. But in your heart, you already know you've received it. Say, done deal. You know, bakit? Maybe because you trust me na hindi tatalbog? But my tomorrow, funded though, right? Okay. What happened in your heart? Naka pay nga siya sa ha. Say ha. Right? It's done. The pressure has left. 
Wala nang heaviness, wala nang worry. At that moment, you know, it is done. But it's just a promise. And in your heart, you have that rest. That's what rest looks like. The rest in this verse looks like this. Ah, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, nakahing, naka, pahinga, pahinga, nak, nakahinga, nakahinga ka. Right? This is exactly the same thing, by the way, when you're sick and you have the disease. And God the Father made a promise. He says, by the stripes, Jesus, you were healed. And I am the Lord who heals you. San yung promise na yun? Next verse. It's in Bible. Next verse. It's in 1 Peter 2.24, Exodus as well. It's the same thing. He heals all your disease. You just heard the word, the promise, and then you believe your father, Right? And that at the moment you receive the promise as a point of contact, and in your heart, say puso ko, you enter in that rest and say, ha. Ah. Say, ha. Ah. It's a done deal. It's a sigh of relief. If you don't have that sigh of relief and you're still worried, you're not entering God's rest. There is the difference. I believe that I have already received it and sh I shall have it. But Pastor Riz, ang tagal. How long is it going to take? Sino dyan? You know the answer? Malay ko, hindi ko alam. Actually, I don't know. That's true. But I know that I already have it. That's the key. You know that you know that you know, no matter what circumstances are saying, no matter what it looks like in the physical, because you already know. This is the reason why Jesus said in Luke uh, 18, next verse, Luke 18 says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever does not receive, say receive, the kingdom of God, his divine health, his unlimited provision, his restoration, his promotion, his breakthrough with faith, and humility like a child will not enter. Those who do not receive with childlike faith will not enter the kingdom, will not be able to receive. It's a matter of the heart. In the Passion Translation, it says, Passion, next verse. Learn this well according to passion, the Passion Translation. Unless you receive revelation, that's why you're here, by the way, church, to receive revelation of the kingdom the same way a little child receives it you will never be able to enter in so how does childlike faith look like because there's some there's there's some keys here number one i have to enter is to rest you're supposed to have a sigh of relief ah. and then you're supposed to have childlike faith how does it look like I was, actually, I was actually thinking, what does childlike faith look like? And yesterday, uh, Mark and uh, Kim and uh, Kai and Alexandra came over. And uh, they're going on vacation uh, soon to Malaysia and Singapore. And say, asan pupunta, right? And uh, say, sa so Malaysia, punta da Legoland. And when Legoland came up, Kai perked up. And he was so excited. Keeps on talking about it. He's counting the days. Nagtatalunan sila ni Mark kung ilang weeks na lang, right? Planning what to do. Planning what to buy. He says, I'm saving my money. He's expecting it. But it's just a promise. He doesn't have it yet. But he expects it. He's excited. Now, God, our Father, has promised to you. Do you expect it? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. Do you keep on talking about it? Yes. I could have said to Kai, Kai, sabi-sabi lang ni Mark yan. Pero pupunta lang kayo, dyan lang sa Enchanted. <laughs> Do you think he'll believe that? Why? Childlike faith. He will take his Father's word over my word any time. Why? Because Mark is his Father. Church, this is key point you have a father in heaven and his name is faithful you have a father who keeps his promises where in his word 
In Revelation, in Rima, what he speaks in your heart, the promises does not come back void. He will accomplish all that he says. He will turn everything around for your own good. Why? Because on this side of the cross, we don't hope, we don't wish, we don't pray and beg God, right? Trying to motivate God and even manipulate him. Say, Lord, if I come to church today, can I have this? No, you don't try to manipulate God. No, no, no. The healing... The restoration, the financial increase, the breakthrough, the promotion. It's already paid for. Say, done deal? He already gave it to you when Jesus died over 2,000 years on the cross. He nailed it on the cross. And this is the key, church. If you truly understand this in your heart, it will be the difference maker for you in 2024. This is the revelation. You already have it. And turn to his rest, have childlike faith, and what you say will come to pass. You know how we declare, declare, declare? Maybe the change of the heart, you're declaring, but your heart isn't in position to receive. So number one, enter into God's rest and have childlike Kai faith. Right? Do you receive this message, church? Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Excuse the voice. Oh, my. Okay. I am in faith that I'm able to deliver my message today. You guys can hear me? Okay. Before I do... I'm just going to ask Sistania to read something. This is a testimony from someone, and I believe this is what um, Arvi was talking about. It's a testimony from someone, not from here. She's from Davao, I believe. Okay, guys. Okay. Okay. This was March of this year when she sent me the first message. Sabi ni Lot Lot, I'm from Maragusan, Davao de Oro, Mindanao. Pastora, kung malapit lang po sana, aaten po ako. Pero kung mga may recorded videos po kayo, I'll be happy learning from it. I really feel the love of Christ sa church niyo po. Napakaganda po. Then April, she sent this. Pastora, yay, indeed, God is awesome. Almost three years after my firstborn, 32 weeks, baby died. Again, I am pregnant. Halos nawalan na ako ng pag-asa. Then come a time, nakita ko ang Wisdom Church of Manila sa Facebook. Nag-watch ako ng mga preaching and really build my faith, especially in the power of declaration and confession. Ito na po, God is great. She's, great. She's pregnant. And then December, that was just a few days ago. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hello po, Pastor Rasel. Ito na po ang blessings ni Lord. Early this year, napaki, nap, nakapakinig ako ng preaching ninyo. And it really built my faith. Confessing and declaring all the favor po na gusto kong ma-receive. And ito na po, just gave birth last November 29, 2023. Yeah. <laughs> Diagnosed yeah. with bilateral polycystic ovaries since 2020. <laughs> Then when finally got pregnant, nagka-hemorrhage na naman ako, but I kept on canceling all those things kasi hindi po yun galing kay Lord, as you have said po. Then nung nag-follow-up check-up ako after a month, clear na ang hemorrhage ko, okay din po si baby. Next. <laughs> Nagka-UTI, same process po. I have the faith na hindi po yun para sa akin. Kaya next check-up, cleared na din po lahat. Napakabuti po ng Diyos. Indeed, His faithfulness and grace never runs out. November 28 po, na-admit ako. Sabi ng nurse, malaki po ang possibility na masisarian section ako dahil mataas ang BB ko. Again, I canceled those declarations sa amin ni baby. And early, November 29, 3.23 a.m., Nakapanganak po ako ng normal, no CS yes. done. Plus, maganda po ang condition namin ni baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. God is so good po. Salamat po sa mga buhay niyo. Napakalaking tulong po ang pagdating niyo sa amin. Malayo man kami, pero damang-dama ko po ang pag-ibig ng Diyos gamit ang mga buhay niyo. At ang mga word ni Lord, totoo po. Marahil, hindi man ako ninyo kilala, pero maraming salamat po. My son's name po ay Seth Zachary T. Makahas. Seth means appointed. Zachary means God remembers. 
There's one more. The fruit of... May, may, may tanong siya, no? May tanong ba daw? Hindi. Ito yung kingdom na <laughs> law siguro. The fruit of my mouth challenge testimony. To God be the glory and honor always. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That is so powerful. And you know what? Every time we receive messages like that, it just, you know, gives us that another push of energy to just continue, right? And work harder because we know we are touching lives, not just here in Metro Manila, but all over the Philippines. So this is so good. I mean, it's something that we weren't expecting. It's someone that, from someone who we don't know. But they took the time to message. And again, she's saying that is the fruit of her mouth. So if you are not familiar with the booklet, the fruit of your mouth, this January, you better get started again. Sino dito yung nag fruit of your mouth? Oh, come on. That needs to be 100% of us. We will reintroduce this booklet in January. I'm working on it. I'm updating it. And I'm hopefully going to create another booklet that will work with that, that will talk about your dreams and goals. So um, we want to push this, and hopefully towards the end of this year, we're going to talk more about dreams and goals and just guide you into how can I dream with the Lord? How can I receive God's dream for me and cooperate with that dream? So we're going to do that. But anyway, so let, let me just do some quick announcements as well. Very quickly, yesterday, kaya nawala yung boses ko. Girls, ano nangyari? Yesterday, we had ladies night. So we're going to start doing this quarterly. But um, it's a gathering of just ladies in the church. Um, mainly the Ministry of Helps. And this is what happened. So on dami namin, 40 plus people. And then 45, I believe. And then last week, the week before this was actually men's night naman. So men gathered. So every gathering we have a specific topic so the man's topic was i believe about sexual sins and then our topic was about emotions how do you overcome emotions and then next can we show your pictures okay also wisdom basketball who here attended basketball yesterday john nakita kita. there paul <clears throat> if you want to be added to this just contact anthony my son, Anthony Nicholas, they have like a, a, a different Viber group to just gather people and say, hey, you want to play, right? So, so this is like, I don't know how often they do it, but I see them playing um, every few times. Anyway, shuttle service. So listen, if you are using public transportation, we do pickups from Eastwood. Are you familiar with this location? It's actually in between McDonald's and Cilantro. So, meron dong waiting shed. So, pwedeng dun kayo maghintay kayo. And you can be there 1.30 p.m. Um, the shuttle service will be there. And also, another round at 1.45. So, if you miss the 1.30, 1.45, they'll be there again to pick you up and bring you to Thames International. And then, later, after the service, at 4.45, so, mag-fellowship muna kayo, kumain muna tayo. And then, 4.45, you leave from here, and then they bring you to Eastwood, that same location. Is that good? Yeah, so, yeah, please use it. And I know some people are like, you know, uh, public transportation lang ako, medyo mahirap yung papasok dito sa uh, So we have this service now. Thank you, shuttle team. Senyon. They were the ones who actually brought that up. Anyway, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for my voice. Lord, I thank you that I'm able to deliver this message from you to everyone here today. Lord, I thank you for every hungry hearts, for every hearts that are open to receive your message, open to receive the revelation from you. Lord God, may the words come out of my mouth, not from me, but from you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we recognize you that you are in the center of this conversation. You are in our midst. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just visualize na iba yung kausap niyo, okay? Are you bothered with my voice? Di naman, no? Okay, let's move on. So let's start with Romans 12.2. 
It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You are very familiar with this verse, right? Sabe, renew your mind so that what? So that you may prove the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. You know, sometimes we read this and say, oh yeah, I know that. I've heard that so many times, right? But what does it really mean? To have God's good will, perfect will, and acceptable will in your life. Here's what we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk about this, and it says here, "Prove that you may prove." You know, this word "prove" is actually from the original Greek word that means so that you may allow, so that you may agree. A lot of times, the blessing you don't experience from the Lord because. You need to agree with the blessings first before you start seeing it in your life. That's why the Bible says, renew your mind, change how you think. When you change how you think, now you start agreeing, Lord, ito pala yung maganda para sa akin, no? Ito pala hindi maganda para sa akin. Now you start thinking the way God's think, thinking about you. Now you start agreeing. Now you start approving. Now you start allowing God's will for your life, which is good, which is acceptable and pleasing, which is perfect. It's complete. Can we show that umbrella? This, this is just so beautiful because you have to see this. God's perfect will for you, God's abundance, protection, your satisfaction in life, you know, sometimes we're looking for fulfillment, for satisfaction, right? And we can't find it. God's peace, anointing, increase and in multiplication. You're praying for increasing your finances, divine health, great exploits, miracles, the supernatural, promotion, favor, and blessings. All of these things that we want to experience in our lives are under the umbrella of God's perfect will. So you can't say, masyadong madalim yan. I don't want the perfect will. Hindi ko yan maintindihan. You have to understand. Because if these are the things that you want to experience, listen, they are under God's perfect will. Acceptable and good. And you have to what? Agree, allow, and approve that in your life before you start seeing it. Again, to experience this, you have to what? Renew your mind, Romans 12, 2 says, right? I want to go back one verse, Romans 12, 1. What did it say? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is reasonable service. You know, this word service actually means worship. So when you present yourself as a living sacrifice to God, it's a form of worship. And listen, when we start talking about sacrifice, we're not just saying, it's not limited to just your body being holy, your body being blameless, your body being set apart. It's not limited to just your body. This is also talking about your soul your mind, your will, and your emotion. This is actually what we talked about yesterday with, with the ladies. Your emotion. It's offering that as a living sacrifice to the Lord. So in order for you to experience the good, acceptable, perfect will of God, renew your mind and offer yourself as what? Say it. Living sacrifice. This means that if you want to experience again the perfect will of God and become a living sacrifice, you have to what? Forget all of your personal agendas and focus on all of God's agendas. This means you have to forget all of your personal purposes and focus on, Lord, ano yung purpose mo? in my season, in my life right now, in my family. Being a living sacrifice means you have to forget all of your emotions. Can you say that word, emotions? You have to set aside all of your emotions and focus on what God is telling you. Pero Lord, hindi ko 
it's not comfortable. Nahihiya akong lumapit. Kasi sabi ni God, pag pray mo, di ba? But he, that what it means. You need to set aside that convenience. You need to set aside that hiya factor. Right? You need to set aside what you feel and just focus on what, what is God telling you to do in this season. You need to set aside and not focus on the opinions of others. This is big. Because a lot of times you want to please people. A lot of times you want to get the agreement of other people in your life, in your family, your parents, your relatives. Right? Naku, hindi ko na nga lang gagawin to kasi marami silang sinasabi. Marami silang opinion. Right? But so what? Whose opinion do you need to look at and focus on? God's opinion and only God's opinion. And that's what it means to be a living sacrifice. And I, I understand this is not easy to do. And let me, let me pull up John 11.25. This is what it means. It says, and this was Jesus speaking. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. It's kind of contradicting, diba? Parang, you're gonna die, but you're gonna live. It's also kind of like what Jesus said in Romans 12, 2 and 1, that, you know, if you want to live the perfect will of God in your life, you have to die to yourself. You have to be a living sacrifice. You have to die to your own purposes, to your own agenda. Ano yung mas, ano yung feel good para sa'yo? Ano yung okay para sa'yo? It doesn't matter anymore. If God says go, go. If God says forgive, forgive. If God says give this offering, then give this offering. Eh Lord, wala na matitira sa'kin. Does it matter? Because the Lord will replace all of those emotions all of the thoughts that you have, all of the purpose that you have for you lang personally, the Lord will re replace them with His dreams for you, with His purpose for you. The Lord will replace them with His own thoughts for you, with His own emotions for you, which is again the perfect will of God. Do you believe this, church? Yeah, we, we need to, I mean, coming into 2024, we need to, establish this in our heart. We need to be very convinced that, you know, yung satisfaction na hinahanap ko sa relationship, and I'm going from one relationship to another, I'm not finding it, maybe you need to surrender. Maybe you need to be a living sacrifice first, then you can experience that satisfaction. that increase, the promotion that you're expecting, and you've been trying so many kind of businesses, so many things, so many jobs, right? But still, at the end of the day, okay, mag end na ulit 2023, I still have no savings. But maybe you need to be a living sacrifice before you experience that breakthrough in your finances. Just maybe. But that's what the Word says. Everybody say, I need to renew my mind. I need to present myself as a living sacrifice. These are the two main keys. Again, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And you know, this message was actually brought to me, downloaded to me by the Lord um, weeks ago. And the Lord says, there were blessings that we missed this year, 2023. There were blessings that got delayed this year, 2023. There were blessings that were blocked this year, 2023. And it's not because they're not there. It's not because they were not given. Nandiyan na. Binigay na yan ni God sa'yo. These blessings were planned, were prepackaged, prepared by God for you and I this year, 2023. And somehow, somewhere, we missed it. It was blocked or it's delayed. 
What happened? Why did it happen? Let me read to you Hebrews 12, 15 to 17. Actually, just 15. And this is in New King James Version. It says, see to it that no one falls short of the grace. Now, when we see this word grace, it means blessings. This means these are the things that you need and the breakthroughs that you've been praying for. So no one falls short of the grace of God that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. This verse tells us why. Why we fell short of the grace. It is because of Bitter roots, bitter roots in our hearts. I'm going to read to you another version, TPT version, same verse. It says, watch over each other to make sure that no one misses the revelation of God's grace. So we miss on the revelation of God's grace and make sure that no one lives with the root of bitterness sprouting within them with which only causes trouble and poison the hearts of many. It poisons your heart. It defiles your heart. What is it? Bitterness. We miss on God's grace, breakthrough, blessings, and favor because we held on to bitterness. Another version, AMPC version, it says, exercise foresight and be on the watch to look, to see that no one falls back, falls back from and fails to secure God's grace, favor, blessings, right? And in order that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness, hatred, now there's more words right there, same thing, right? Shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment and may Many become contaminated and defiled by it. Church, listen. Unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, resentment, all of these things, lahat ng kapatid at pinsan nitong mga to, right? These things cost you and I to miss, to fall short on God's grace, favor, and blessings this year. This year. Let me read another version, last one. I think I love this one. It says in NLV version, see that no one misses God's loving favor. Do not let wrong thoughts about others get started among you. If you do, many people will be turned to a life of sin. Wrong thoughts of others. Let's add that to the list. You miss out, you fell short of God's grace and favor and blessing this year because you had wrong thoughts about other people. Ano pong example nun? Chismis. Gossip. Envy. Jealousy. Strife. Division. All of those things. The Bible says, and this is just one verse that I read, just different versions. But what is it saying is it defiles your heart. It poisons your heart. And when your heart is poisoned, you cannot receive from God. This is big. And you know, sometimes you're thinking and you're praying, Lord, ano pa pang kulang? Sabi nga ni Pastor Riz, where's your deeds? Pinag-usapan na natin yung deeds. Naku, I've been working so hard months in, months out. Over time here and there. Ginawa ko na lahat, Lord. Ano kulang? Bakit wala pa rin yung breakthrough na hinahanap ko? Maybe this is the answer. What failed? Maybe this is the answer. Maybe you've been entertaining thoughts like, look at me. I'm doing so much more compared to that person. Pero bakit siya? Bless. Ako hindi. Who cares thoughts like that? Walang haamin. Bakit siya mas blessed? Bakit yung pamilya niya mas okay? How come they have more and have less? Those questions in your mind, right? Thinking about other people, right? Or you have strife and you're angry about someone and you said, I'm just going to ignore this person. Bahala ka dyan. 
para ma-realize mo na mali ka. Di ba? Kung mali siya, ikaw, tama. That, that is the kind of thinking, maybe you don't realize it, but when you start thinking that other people are wrong, it implies that you think of yourself as the righteous one, as the one who is right in every way. Right? And see, this is what defiles the heart. And listen, church, your blessings, the blessing that God prepared for you this year, 2023, and I'm sure there's another package coming for 2024, right? It's pre-packaged. It's pre-planned. It's ready for you to receive, right? But those blessings, God is not able to reverse them anymore. Everybody say, my blessings are irreversible. Hindi na niya mababawi yon, Binigay niya na. And listen, also you cannot reverse it. You cannot cancel it. The enemy can't do anything about it. He cannot cancel it as well. It's irreversible. However, however, I'm going to share this story with you in Numbers 23. Because your blessing is irreversible, yes. But you need to understand that it can be blocked and delayed. And your eyes can be covered so that you don't see them. In Numbers 23, verses 19 to 20, this actually talks about a story of the king of Moab. Moab, and his name is Balak, who asked this guy, Balaam, kind of uh, the same thing, Balak and Balaam, to curse the children of Israel, to curse the children of God. And this is what Balaam said to the king. He said in Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? You know, for some of you need to hear this. This is about God's promise for you. Has God said something to you and he's not going to do it? Has he spoken and he, will he not make it good? Of course he will, right? And he actually already did. Verse 20, it says, Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed God has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. God has already blessed, and no one else can reverse it. Not any demon can reverse it. Right? His blessings, breakthroughs, and promises in your lives are irreversible. Now, I'm going to continue in... Um, Eight chapters after, so Numbers chapter 31, verse 16. This is what happened uh, still regarding Balaam, right? Look, these women caused the children of Israel through the counsel of this guy, Balaam, the one who said, God's blessing, I cannot reverse, right? To trespass against the Lord in the incident of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. There was a plague in the children of Israel. Sounds like a curse to me. What happened? I thought the children of Israel cannot be cursed. What happened here? Now, Balaam realized the blessing cannot be reversed. Yes, but the blessing can be blocked. What did he do? He, through his counsel, right? Counsel of Balaam. He counseled King Moab, the enemy, right? To use the women. These women, the women, the Moab, Moabite women, to influence the Israelites with their sexual desires and they worship their idols and their gods. And because of that, because they, their minds were influenced because their hearts were defiled. The blessings were blocked and the curse came in. 
So this is connected to what we're talking about here. Blessings cannot be reversed in your life. However, when you or if you come in agreement and allow the enemy to influence your life by agreeing with division, resentment, unforgiveness, pride, jealousy, envy, all of those things, you just defile your hearts. And you allow the works of the enemy in your life. So the Lord highlighted to me four things today that I want to just talk about more in detail. And I, this is not limited to these four, but if, if I feel like these are the four things that the enemy is using right now in the body of Christ to prepare your heart so that you don't receive next year. So watch for these and make sure that you get rid of these things and cleanse your hearts, right? I'm, I'm gonna, just going to give you a list for now. Unforgiveness, kamag-anak yan ng offense, bitterness, right? We're going to talk about division, disagreement, strife in the family, in the church, in workplaces, right? What about rebellion, not submitting to authority? And what about, this is big, insecurity, envy, Jealousy. We're going to talk about these. You guys ready? I just made an introduction. Okay, 3.30. Let's go. You know, all of these things, by the way, are reigned by pride. Let's go this. Next verse, please. It says, you, your boast becomes a prophecy of a future failure. In other versions of the Bible, it says your pride. Your pride. It's a prophecy of future failure. The higher you lift yourself up in pride, the harder you fall in disgrace. The higher you have that pride, you inaalagaan mo yan, nurture mo yan. The higher, the much more you nurture that pride, the Bible says, the harder you fall. Let's start with unforgiveness, holding on to a grudge. Who here finds it very hard to forgive? Wala dito, no? You know, I'm just going to give you some notes for your friends. Yeah? You know, take notes, not for you, but for your friends. And share it with them. Is that okay? Yeah, so listen. So listen. So unforgiveness is holding grudge against someone. For some reason, you're holding grudge because you want that person to feel the hurt that you have. Does it work? It doesn't work, right? A lot of times, the person doesn't even know that you're offended and you're carrying that grudge. Romans 12, 19, it says, Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God, for the scriptures say, I will take revenge, I will pay them back, says the Lord. I'm bringing up revenge because a lot of times, yeah, maybe you're not saying it, but in your heart, you don't want that person to be happy. Hindi kayo, yung kaibigan nyo, ayaw nila mag-forgive kasi ayaw nila na maging masaya yung ibang tao. And this is somehow, that's revenge. Right? Sana ma-realize nila yung maling ginawa nila sa akin. That, ki that kind of feeling. Oh, oh hindi, hindi, yeah. kaibigan mo yun, yeah. Unforgiveness leads, often leads to a desire of revenge. And let, let me read Ephesians 4.32. It says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ forgave you. Okay, I just want to read this because it, forgiveness is a command. It's not even something that is your decision, right? It's a command from God. Can we read the next slide, please? And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Okay, I just want to bring this up because for some reason, some believers still think, believers na kayo, saved na, na hindi pa rin kayo forgiven ni God. I just have to say, if you are saved, who here is saved? Everybody? Yes, please, yes. If you are saved 
every sin, past, present, and future sins, pati yung mga magiging kasalanan mo in the future, is already been forgiven by God. Forgiven, done deal. So maybe you're asking, so why do I have to ask forgiveness? It's for you. So that you can heal and forgive yourself. But listen, I hope this is clear since we're talking about forgiveness. And that's why God forgave you already. He had given that in you. You have forgiveness inside of you. Then you have forgiveness to give. You iba sa inyo, hindi dito. Yung iba, iniisip nila, wala akong may bibigay. Hindi ko yan kayang ibigay. Kaya mo yan because God forgave you. You already have it inside of you. Next, next verse, please. And then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive? Ayan, yan yung mga tanong na, paulit-ulit na lang, pastora. Paano ba yun? Palagi-lagi na lang, every, every day, every, every week. Panagi sigaw. Sigaw na lang ng sigaw sa akin. Patatawarin ko pa rin ba? Ano sabi ng Bible? Jesus said, I tell you, not seven times. Not seven times. He said 77 times. You iba sa inyo dyan, nag-calculate na. Oh, ano yung sagot dyan? No. This means you forgive endlessly. Constantly. As long as you are alive, you forgive. That's what this means. Next, next verse, please. Colossians 1, 13, 14. He has delivered us, God has delivered us from the power of the darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption, salvation, right? And the forgiveness of sins. Again, this is what you received when you receive your salvation. Next one, please. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Paulit-ulit, no? Just different Bible verses I've given you. Forgive because God has already forgiven you. Forgive because you have received that forgiveness, that redemption in your life. Forgive. How do you keep unforgiveness out of your family? How do you keep unforgiveness out of the church? Again, you have to remind yourself that unforgiveness is an inroad of the enemy in your life. That's number one, right? Second one is make a decision to forgive right away. Kailan? Hindi next week. Pwede ba? Yung iba, Lord, pwede bang next year na lang? Can I just forgive next year? And you know what you're asking? Lord, can I also receive my blessings next year? Pwede ba next year na lang din yung blessings? Because that's what you're asking. But you got to forgive right away. And what? Because everybody makes mistakes. Who here doesn't make any mistake at all? O di ba wala? O lang kayo? Who here doesn't make any mistake? We all do make mistakes. And that's why the Bible says you got to make allowance. What? For each other's faults. Pag nagkamali, well, I understand. We all make mistakes, right? And so right away, forgive. Second one, how do you kick out unforgiveness, right? Make a decision that you don't want Satan you don't want to give Satan an inroad in your life. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11. It says, if you forgive anyone, anything, I too forgive. This is Apostle Paul speaking. That one, and what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ the Messiah. Now here's the key. To keep Satan from getting the advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his wiles and intentions. So, to summarize this, Apostle Paul was saying, you got to forgive. So that what? So that you keep Satan from taking advantage of you and of your family. That's another big reason to forgive. 
you're not only blocking the blessings when you keep unforgiveness in your life. What you're doing is you're opening the door wide for the enemy to come in and not just come in in one aspect, in every aspect of your life. Isipin mo na yan sa health mo, sa health ng pamilya mo, sa finances, relationships, relationship nyo mag-asawa, relationship nyo sa mga anak mo, lahat ng aspect ng buhay. This is what this is saying. So that's why our forgiveness is very heavy. You gotta commit to, Lord, okay, I, I know that word, New Year's resolution, right? I mean, that's not for us, but it's being aware of what's in your heart and say, Lord, cleanse my heart. I don't want to get, continue my days carrying this unforgiveness. And then, of course, understand that you have been translated, you have been moved from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. Can I read 1 John 2, 9, please? It says, whoever says he is in the light, so I said, I'm saved, I'm in Christ, I'm in the light, I was moved, I was translated to the kingdom of God, I'm a citizen of the kingdom, okay? The Bible says, if you're saying that, that you're a citizen, but you hate your brother, you're still in darkness. You're delusional. You're still in darkness. If you're saying, I'm a kingdom citizen, and you carry that envy and jealousy against someone in the church, you're still in darkness. If you're saying, you know, I follow Jesus, I'm saved, I'm a child of God, pero hindi mo pa rin ma-forgive yung ginawa ng isang tao sa'yo 10 years ago, the Bible says, listen, you're still in darkness. How do you know you've already forgiven? Check your heart. How? Paano nga ba? Alam ko na forgive ko na siya eh. Pero paano mo talaga malalaman na you have already completely 100% forgiven that person? If you can pray for the person and pray for him to do well. Lord, gusto ko makita yung success, yung promotion sa buhay niya. I pray for health and healing for this person. I pray for relationship restoration for this person. I pray for all the good things to come into his life. Kung kaya mong sabihin yon sa isang tao, na forgive mo na siya. Right? Check your heart. Sometimes you think you have. Pero kung sabi mo, na forgive ko na, pero tama na yun, doon na lang, hanggang doon na lang. Pag pray ko pa ba, wag na. Review. Right? Balikan mo to. Go back to this. There's a recording. Okay, let, let, let's move on. Division. Do you have something to share? You're like trying two minutes? No. Okay, division. Okay. Yes. Because this was warning my mom about forgiveness and Louder. Yeah. letting the sat Satan enter. So, uh, as husband and wife. Talaga gusto niya husband and wife topic, no? no? Because then we have a lot of husband and wife. <laughs> yeah. Paulit ulit. Palaging kasalanan ng oh, husband. Oh. Panay mali, panay mali. Panay mali, panay mali. Tas ang tagal tagal mag forgive. So, you're letting the. Uh, enemy come into our family by not forgiving me right away. <laughs> right? Men! <laughs> right? Right. Okay. I just want to clarify that. <laughs> Tama yun. Tama yun. <laughs> Alam mo, kaming babae, we forgive, but we just zip our mouth. Diba? Forgive and just zip. Right? And I forgive and then you pray for the person. Right? And then you zip your mouth. I don't know. Just take that moment to zip your mouth. Don't say anything. Right, Pastor Riz? 
Let's move on. Division. <clears throat> Do you look for people to side with you? Alam mo ba, sis, yung ginawa sa akin ni ganito. Ganyan, 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 ganyan. Mali, di ba? Di ba mali? Yung ginawa niya. Di ba? What are you asking? Sympathy? Agreement? I understand that there's always that desire for someone to agree with you, right? But what you're doing, and you have to realize this, you are creating division. What you're saying is, tama ako, mali siya. Ikaw, sak, dito tayo ng tawa. Siya dun siya. You're dividing. Pag umupo tayo dun sa church, dito tayo sa kanan, dun siya sa kaliwa. Ah. Huwag kang tatabi dun ah. Sino yung ganyan? Wala naman dito, di ba? Wala. Wala. Sa mga magkakaibigan, huwag mong imbitahin. Tayo lang, pwede tayo lang. That's division. Right? You don't want to include people. You want people to side with you. You're asking for sympathy, yes. You're asking for attention, yes. But understand that, again, this opens. It, it's in road to Satan. How do we keep division out of family and out of church? Again, remind yourself the division is an inroad for the enemy into your life. And the first one is know that you are called to be united. We, as a body of Christ, are called to be united. Right? Can we read that first? It says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, all of you agree, all of us agree with one another in what you say. And there will be no divisions among you, but that you perfectly be united in your thoughts and in your mind. Agreement with our words, agreement with our thoughts. Talking about the church community, yes. Talking about your family, yes. We need to strive to be in that agreement, to be in unity with one another. Because again, if you're not united, you're in division. There's no such thing as neutral. If you're not united, if you're not aligned, you're divided. Let me give you another reason. Unity is a doorway to miracles and breakthroughs in your family, in your life. Let's read this. It says, the Lord said, as one people is speaking the same language, this is about the Tower of Babel, right? They were speaking the same language. They were in agreement. They were united. They have begun to do this, and nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. If your family is united, if your marriage is united, if your friendship is united, if your workplace is united, if the church is united, nothing that you plan to do will be impossible for you. That's a promise right there. This is another big reason why you want to kick out any hint, any shadow of division. Pag lumamit sa'yo yung kapatid mo sa sister mo sa, sa faith, and say, sis, alam mo ba? Ano yan? <laughs> you, ano, your, your filter should be up already, right? Yung mga ganong approach, alam mo ba, sis? Filter should be up already. What is she telling me? And, it's, and do not condemn that sister or that brother, right? And just say, um, let's pray about this. And I just want to remind you, sis, ha? You know what we, the Bible verses, ito, ito yung mga Bible verses. Use this and say, we don't want this in your life, right? You don't want to block blessings in your life. You want unity so that whatever you're praying for, whatever you're praying for, part three, will be accomplished in your life. Let me give you the third reason. Actually, yeah, third reason. No. Let me just read to you the, this one, Bible verse. The Lord said, can we go back here? Yeah. The Lord said, oh, next, next slide, please, verse. Jesus knew the thoughts and said to them, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. A house, a family, a church, an environment, 
if you're divided, sooner or later you will fall. Next, next verse, please. Oh, wala na. I think there is one. Actually, that's it. Okay, bottom line, what this is saying, and that's, I think that's the main reason, right, for division. Kick out division out of your family. The dreams that you have as a couple, as husband and wife, do you want those dreams to accomplish? Create a unity in that marriage. Create a unity with your children. Create a unity wherever you go, right? And maybe you're asking, what if the person is difficult? Pray for them. Especially if you are doing life together. You cannot avoid, right? If you are doing life together, pray for the person. Love the person. Accept the person. Make a decision. You know, all of these things that we're talking about, church, is a decision. Can we say that word, decision? It's for you to make a decision. Can we, can we just turn off my lapel, please? I'm just going to use my wireless mic. Okay. We need to make a decision, right? It's a, decision, it's a choice for us to say, you know what? I'm not going to allow any kind of division in my relationship. I'm not going to allow any... Ano mga taas-taas ng kilay dyan? You know, yung mga... Yung pahaging. Alam mo yung... It's not really... You're not fighting, but you know there's something. Right? Do not nurture it. You got to just say, no, this is not for me. No, this is not for my family. Let's move to the rebellion. Rebellion is bottom line. It's questioning the authority in your life. And we talk about authority. For children, it's your parents, right? And of course, even us adults, our parents, yes, our, our uh, workplace, your boss, right? Authority, school, your teachers, right? What about government? What about... Uh, church, the leaders, right? These are authorities in your life. And bottom line, rebellion is you're questioning, you're defying, you're disobeying the, those authorities in your life. Let me just tell you how God sees rebellion. First Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is like the sin of divination. In other verses of the Bible, it says it's like a sin of witchcraft. This is how heavy rebellion is. It's like a sin of witchcraft and arrogance like the evil of idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you as king. This is talking to King Saul at that time. But we can learn from this. Hebrews 3.15. It says, remember what it says. Today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. Bottom line, rebellion will cause your hearts to harden. And when your heart is hardened, you're not going to be able to receive from God. Next one. From the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, it says, Deuteronomy 21, verse 21. Suppose a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father or mother, even though they discipline him. In such a case, the father and mother must take the son to the elders as they hold court at the town gate. And the parents must say to the elders, this son of ours is stubborn, is rebellious and refuses to obey. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Oh, tough, right? Then all the men of his town must stone him to death. In this way, you will purge this evil from among you and all Israel will hear about it and be afraid, okay? Look at me for a minute, and you got to listen to this. Okay, I, I am not saying, we're not saying that if your child is rebellious, that he or she needs to be stoned to death, okay? May this be recorded? Yes, it is recorded. This is the Old Testament way. Why? This is actually God's mercy to his people at that time. 
Why? Because at that time, there's no way to cast out evil, to cast out demonic spirits. And listen, a rebellious way is a rebellious spirit. So if a child has a rebellious spirit, mercy of God comes by stoning the child to death so that the demonic spirit is not imparted to the family members, to the community, and to other people at that time. But listen, I want to read this because this is how heavy rebellion is. This is how heavy when you like, I'm not going to submit, you know, laging na utos ng magulang, eh, mas alam ko naman yung ginagawa ko kesa sa kanila. That is the heart of a rebellious heart. I know better than them. So why would I obey? That is the heart of you when you're in rebellion. If you are not willing to submit under a leadership, what's the solution? Get out. Move out. You can. If it's a church and it's a church leader, you can move to another church. If it's a work environment, ayo mo yung boss mo, di magresign ka. Rather than you doing this, right? In the eyes of God, this is this is not a light matter. Okay, how do you kick out rebellion? Okay, I'm gonna be go going very quickly now. Spend time with the Lord. You need to build that relationship with God and that complete trust in God. Why? Because rebellion is, bottom line, it's a trust issue. My trust issue ka if you're rebellious. And you just have to recognize that. Lord, do I have that heart? Do I have a trust issue? And you know, you need to start that trust foundation between you and God. Because once that's established, you have that complete, complete trust with God, then that trust in your spouse, trust in your parents, trust in leadership of others will also be fixed. It has to, be, it has to start with God. I'm going to continue now with insecurity. Insecurity shows up in so many ways. Right? Bottom line, this is when you don't know who you are in Christ. When you don't know how God sees you. That's when insecurity comes in, right? And I'm going to focus on jealousy and envy. What is jealousy? Jealousy is being threatened by someone else. It's about being threatened by someone else. Oh, she's better than me. Pag pumasok sa work, naku, imbis na ako yung mapopromote, siya yung mapopromote. Kasi mas magaling siya. Naku, she's smarter than me. Oh, she's prettier than me. So you feel threatened. She's going to take my position. She's going to get more attention. She's going to take away attention from me. She's going to take love away from me. That's what jealousy is. What about envy? Because they're kind of similar but different, right? Envy is feeling bad towards those who possess what you want to possess about stuff, right? You're envious. So today, you drove your car to church, and you love, and you were blessing your church. I don't know. You're blessing your car, right? You love your car. It's so good. And then you park your car, and then you saw a car next to you and say, wow, that's a new car. Wow, it looks so good. It's newer. It's nicer, it's bigger, and it's the car that I like. All of a sudden, your car looks like worthless, right? No walang value ng car mo because you saw something that is better. Someone else's car. That's where envy starts to come in. And then now you start feeling bad, right? You start feeling bad about your situation. Is there something wrong with feeling good about something? Maliba? 
Like when you saw a car and you saw, oh, it's a beautiful car. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? However, it becomes wrong when you start feeling bad about yourself and about the things that you have. Dahil dun sa nakita mo. That's when it starts becoming an inroad for the enemy because now you're envious. Now you're jealous. How do you kick out jealousy and envy? You need to understand who you are, like how God sees you. I wrote down here, insecurity can only find space in areas where your identity in Christ is lacking. If you are founded in Christ and you know that Christ, Jesus, our Father God in heaven, loves you and sees you good, and He is pleased by you, if that is established in your heart, then nothing will shake you. Then no envy. There's no room for envy. There's no room for jealousy in your heart. And then, of course, the next one is you need to understand the law of acknowledgement. This is a big kingdom principle. Okay, The law of acknowledgement says what you acknowledge and what you honor. Okay, This is a key word. Acknowledge and honor. What you acknowledge and what you honor, they will be drawn to your life. So if someone gets promoted, what is the right attitude? Acknowledge, honor the person, be happy for the person. Because what? Because you also want that promotion for yourself. If you see someone having a great relationship, right? What is the right response? Be happy, bless them. Right? Bless them and be happy for them because that will be drawn to you as well. Not that particular person, right? But a relationship that is for you will be drawn to you as well. I may last papala gossip. Okay, two, two minutes. Let's do, let's do this. Gossip. Because this is so good. Gossip. Stems from offense, anger, and hatred, right? It's a misuse of your mouth when you gossip. Chismis. You use your words to bring death on someone. Bottom line, how do you know you're gossiping? How do you know? Na nagchichismis ka na pala. You are putting someone else in a bad light. That's bottom line. You're saying something that's not good about someone. See, I share this because I want to warn you. Oh, diva, It's hiding behind. I just, I feel responsible for you. And I care for you. So I'm warning you right now. Right? But that's gossip. You're talking bad things about other people. Because, because what? You want to get attention. You want to prove something that you're right. Right? You want to, okay, alam ko hindi lang to pang ladies eh, para sa lahat to. You want to vent out. Sino dito yung mahilig mag-vent out? Pwede bang pa-vent out lang? And you're just gonna say everything that you don't like about someone. Right? Again, it hides in the need to be responsible. But it's not. Ephesians 4.29, 20, it says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification to impart grace to the hearers? Again, what comes out of your mouth, the Lord is saying, it needs to be edify, it needs to edify someone, build up someone, right? Proverbs 20, 19, it says, a gossip betrays confidence. Avoid anyone who talks too much. Ayan, sino dito yon? Talks too much. Wala, wala dito na. Avoid anyone who talks too much. Next one. Proverbs 26, 20. Without a word, fire goes out. Without gossip, walang awa, quarrel dies down. 
Kung walang chismis, walang away. That's what the Bible is saying. Gossip creates and invites lies, deception, and strife. Proverbs 16, 28. A dishonest man spreads strife. A whisperer, the gossiper, right? Separates close friends. It divides people. It causes tension against other people. And let me read this Bible verse to those who entertain. Okay. Hindi naman po ako yung nag nagchichismis. Wala akong sinasabi, pero nakikinig ka. What about those who listen? I have Bible verse for you. Mark 4, 24. And he was saying to them, take care of what you listen to, what you hear, right? By your standard of measure, it will be measured to you and more will be given you besides. The more chismis you hear, the more chismis will come to you. And the more you receive the chismis, the more you will attract those things in your life. And you will experience those things in your life. So if you hear all negativity, then that's when you experience all negativity as well. Everybody say, I don't like that. Then you should move away from those people. Idleness, let me talk about this very quickly. Is it okay? Can you give me 10 minutes, right? We'll, we'll finish 4.10. Okay, okay. Okay. Idleness, 1 Timothy 5, 13, 14. Besides, they get into the habit of being idle. This was talking about the widows at that time. Yung mga bata pa na widows. Okay, being idle and going about from house to house. Does that sound like those people who chismis? From house to house. Not only to become idlers, but also busybodies. What do they do? Who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not to say. Let's continue. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity to slander. Hindi ko naisip, nasa Bible pala to, no? Yung mga, yung mga nagtitipon-tipon sa bahay-bahay, o kaya sa kalye. And then all they do is just talk about other people. And what Apostle Paul was saying, you know what, if you are a widow... Ibig sabihin, wala ka nang ginagawa. You're idle. You don't have nothing to do. I suggest you marry, you have children, you be busy. Right? Para wala kang panahon na mag -chismis. And you know, you're probably thinking, oh, sa provinces lang yan. That doesn't apply to me. It does. You know, idle time. Who here has idle time? Oh, come on. I have idle time. Pumila ka sa bangko, idle time na yan. Pumila ka sa grocery, idle time yan. Naghihintay ka ng grab car, that's an idle time. You, you don't, it, it's not about the, yun yung pinipicture ni Paul na nag-gather-gather on the street. It, it's not only that. The idle time could be those things in our days now. And what do you do? The apostle said, Apostle Paul says, you got to keep your mind filled with something else. Otherwise, what? You give the enemy the opportunity for you to sin. So we're not just talking about chismes and slander. Yes, it is. But then at the same time, okay, you're looking at your phone and then you're looking at something else already. You're looking at Facebook. Now you're being jealous. You're being envious about those things that you're seeing. Idle time. Right? You got to watch for those idle time and say, I'm not going to be idle. Or if you find yourself idle, there's always something else that you can do. Like maybe bring a book in your bag. Right? Pag idle, nakapila ka, ilabas mo yung book na yan. It's a Christian book. You know, not a novel or anything like that. Right? To learn. Okay, continue. Read. Do something. But don't just browse on the phone and doon tayo nagsisimula ng chismis tapos nagchat-chat ka na. Alam mo ba? Alam mo ba? It starts there, you know? Anyway, you, something to keep in mind and let, let me just close with this one. Ultimately, it's not about, we're talking about being a living sacrifice, right? It's not about what is going to benefit you anymore? It's about 
living the purpose of the kingdom and what is going to benefit the kingdom now. And when you do, those things that will benefit you will come. That's just how it is. When you're willing to die, life will come. When you're willing to sacrifice your resources, resources will come. It's just how it is. And just church, I just want to challenge you today. And I hope today you did make a decision. Make a decision. Right? That you will cleanse your heart out of what? Unforgiveness, resentment, anger, jealousy, division, everything that we talked about, insecurity. Catch those things and cleanse them. Make a decision. It's a decision. Can we show the last slide, please? Uh, the very last one. Um, Luke 6.38. Pastor Riz read this. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall man give into your bosom? Listen, a lot of times you're, you're thinking of your breakthrough, your restoration, all of that stuff. And you're asking the Lord for those things. But those things are given unto you from men. Shall man give unto your bosom? So this is, if you can hold on to this and say, your breakthrough this coming year 2024 is going to be coming from people around you. The connections, the resources that you've been praying for is going to be coming from the people around you. So you, sometimes, I, I, I think some of you kind of held on to that image na, eh, ganito talaga ako, mataray talaga ako eh. It's not gonna serve you. It will never serve you because again, the blessings, the restoration, the breakthrough, the favor is gonna come from men around you. This is how God blesses us, is through men. Can I ask everybody to stand up, please? I'm just going to do this very quickly. But yeah, please, as, we, as you stand up and as you just put yourself in the presence of God, can I ask everybody to have their eyes closed? And just start thinking of these things. Lord, how's my heart? Examine your hearts today. Holy Spirit, right now, I ask you to touch each and every one here today. And just allow them to see what they couldn't see before. Allow them to see any kind of inroad that the enemy had created in their hearts and in their lives. Any kind of pride, any jealousy, any envy, any bitterness that they're holding on to, that they're choosing to hold on to. Anger, irritation, annoyance, fear, anxiety, worry, shame, all of those things. Holy Spirit, reveal those things to each and every one of us today. And right now, when you recognize those things, just say, Lord, I don't want this in my life anymore. Just say that and just say, Lord, I surrender all of these things to you right now, right now. Lord, I surrender my heart to you. Lord, I surrender my heart to you. Lord, I surrender my emotions to you. Lord, I surrender my mind to you. Lord, I surrender all of my will, all of my personal agendas to you. And Lord, right now as a congregation, right now individually, Lord, we receive the will that you have for our life. The good, the acceptable and perfect will that you have for each and every one of us. Lord, we receive that right now in Jesus name we receive the good acceptable and perfect will that you have for our lives right now in Jesus name Lord we thank you 
Lord, we receive your thoughts for us. Lord, we receive your emotions, the love, the peace, the joy, the faithfulness, goodness, and kindness. All of those things that are from you, oh Lord God. Those we receive those things, Lord God, and allow those to replace to replace everything that's not from you that's in our hearts today lord we thank you holy spirit we give you permission to remind us pag dumarating kami dun sa pintuan ng envy ng jealousy ng pride that you will remind us lord the fear the doubt all of those things that are not from you that you will remind us lord not to give in and not to give way to those things lord we thank you we praise you and we glorify you may the seeds that they have received today that we all received today grow 30 60 100 fold we praise you lord we glorify you in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen for more of Wisdom Church of Manila's preachings, you can visit our website at wisdomchurchofmanila.org.